Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're here today at WMT uh, to uh, do our Pureland Assembly, Sunday, Sunday Pureland Assembly. Um, this is uh, my last one here. I know. <laughs> uh, it's life. Uh, you are right. Uh, and uh, after this, tomorrow, I probably, uh, or within a couple of days, I will probably go up north and spend one weekend there. And then, and then after that, I will fly it up back to fly to uh, Korea to do our Dharma uh, propagation. Uh, so we, I go there, we go there twice a year. Um, that's how important they are to us. Um, and so this is goodbye. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting emotional. <laughs> uh, but I'm so glad to be able to say goodbye to all of you. <laughs> Just in case, <laughs> should something happen, you know, continue to cultivate. I hope that you become enlightened soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm very pleased uh, the, the fact we started a long time ago something like 17, 19 years ago at Lu Mountain Temple never thought we could go this uh, far together there's so many of you been with me for a very long and uh, it's nice to still see you uh, I don't know you remember Roberta huh? uh, Roberta uh, somebody brought it up yesterday. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, anyone heard of her? Is she dead or what? She used to be my sidekick. Yeah. In the early days, I was driving around uh, all day uh, and doing what I don't know. <laughs> uh, and uh, she was uh, sitting on my uh, right hand side and commenting about how others drove. You know, this is a bad way to drive. <laughs> it's really, really cute. Anyway, so, um, so anyway, so that's uh, where we are. Uh, we uh, am very proud of that, the fact that uh, you, you all come such a long way. We all come such a long way. Mm. I haven't changed much except that I age a lot. Uh, lots of wear and tear. But many of you have improved so much. It's, it's so impressive. I'm so glad to see that. Uh, so I hope you continue to come to the temple. Um, we've created an environment where people can come and practice safely. Uh, you come here not worry about anything. Um, just cultivate, improve, and heal yourself. Um, prepare yourself to go to the Pure Land. Um, uh, and uh, maybe one day we have uh, the chance to have programs, more programs for your children, hmm? so that they are not uh, uh, don't have to roam around so much. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, also, we should have um, uh, Xin Xin. We should have a tradition to uh, allow people to ask questions. You know, they can pose questions during the week online or call in or I don't know, tell someone so that today, Sunday, we should uh, be a day designated as a day where we speak Dharma in general, hmm? like Buddha Dharma, because I tend to forget. Hmm, I tend to forget to go back to the basics of the fundamental uh, teachings of the Buddha. Uh, and uh, is it's, um, mm, uh, it gives you, all of us, a chance to revisit uh, the, uh, the proper principles. Uh, and uh, so we should uh, allow people to uh, uh, submit questions, okay? Or we hope that even like um, people uh, would uh, uh, put in their, their uh, the questions so that we can uh, learn from each other. Uh, it's interesting we have a, 
very multicultural, multi-ethnicity group. Uh, uh, so we can learn a lot from each other. Yes, one. Mm, yes. Thank you, Master. Uh, you uh, have a question here from Cordelia. Mm -hmm. Amitofo, Master, when I drive, um, when I get to a certain spot, I get a headache. I recite Amitabha and it goes away. Should I continue to recite or endure the headache if it happens? Thank you. Okay, uh, it depends. Uh, so some days it's good to suffer a little. Some days you should try your Kung Fu and see. Well, when you come to the temple, you receive training that enables you to cope better with the challenges in life. Okay? Uh, we, I keep on stressing since day one that I hope you will improve and, and set your sight on improving and improving because it makes you better, helps you better cope with, uh, with life and enjoy your life better. Uh, a, uh, and so, so case in point, uh, you will go out of the temple and go back and go to dif different places. And you'll be uh, go having different experiences and this is when you can draw upon your back of tools you to, to, uh, to deal with, uh, with to face the situations. Uh, so when you go to places where you have a headache, uh, usually it's an act of aggression. Mm -hmm. Someone is uh, being aggressive on you, okay? And so uh, my first reaction would be to, uh, to, uh, to see if I can defend myself, okay? Uh, what I teach you is more orient to, uh, oriented towards self-defense, where we uh, defend ourselves, okay? Uh, instead of being aggressive, we just deal with our problems. So for example, when Cordelia has a headache, if she goes to a certain spot, then uh, use your, your tools to clear the headache. Um, and usually it shouldn't take long at all. Okay, and that's a sign that uh, your Kung Fu is stronger than the aggressor's Kung Fu. However, if you turns out that you have a, an, uh, uh, you face a, a situation, a state, and you can't fix it, that means that you have to work harder. Okay, so I naturally would uh, uh, try to fix it right away. Okay, uh, and each one of us develop uh, tools and skills to fix it differently. So that's what makes life interesting to me, that the challenges, that the uh, changes that, uh, that come every day, and you learn a lot from that about yourself. Okay, how uh, well equipped you are at coping. Okay, so don't be, don't be a crybaby when you, when you face something, uh, draw back, look back into your tools uh, and see what you have to deal with it. And you learn, you learn, you develop uh, more tools if necessary or Im, uh, imp improve your tools, okay? Yes, there's a question in the back. But thầy, yeah, but thầy, um, con có câu hỏi. Um, it's a little bit gross, so I'm not sure if it's okay to ask. We love gross. <laughs> Yeah, mình thích những cái thứ cơm hả? Hả? Yeah, you may ask, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, come on, Thay. Um, so lately when I've been sitting in meditation, um, I've been having more intrusive thoughts. Uh, and usually I still have intrusive thoughts, but they're not as bad. Um, but lately it's been thoughts relating to 
say if I um if I'm meditating and I feel like I have to use the restroom and I have to poop, then like poop would appear. Ew, that's and gross. Then I, <laughs> and I would see like the poop flying around between myself and the Buddha. And then I try to stop thinking about it because I feel, I mean, I feel like it's offensive, but then it keeps happening. And um, the more I try to stop it, the more it keeps happening. Mm -hmm. Or then if, um, say, a thought of a demon will come up, then I would want to challenge a demon, even though I'm scared and I really don't want to. But then the thought comes up of, like, I want to challenge a demon. And I try to thought, like, stop the thought, but it won't stop. And then um, I would try to use the tool of ignoring it and just letting it pass. Mm -hmm. um, but it keeps coming back up, so I'm not sure. Okay, but this is a question for Xin Xin, uh, the abbot of the temple. <laughs> the steel, <laughs> were, were, you weren't paying attention? Yeah, I apologize, I was putting the mouse back together. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, uh, um, could you ask her again, please? No. Yeah. So that she has no more excuses. <laughs> uh, sure, yes. So, um, Venerable Master, uh, when I've been meditating... You can address the question directly to her. <laughs> Master Shin Shin. There you go. Uh, this is Twee. Uh, I would like to ask a question regarding um, my meditation obstruction. So lately when I meditate, I would um, say if I feel like I have to have a bowel movement, then I would see poop everywhere and um, like between myself and the Buddha and I feel like that's offensive to the Buddha. So then I try to stop it, but then it would just keep happening. Even though I'm trying to say, no, I really don't want to think about this poop and, or like the poop would like fly all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, or if when I'm meditating and the thought of a demon comes up and then the, the intrusive thought would say you, I want to challenge the demon and I want to fight the demon but I actually really don't and I keep saying no, no, I, I really don't want to fight a demon like I'm not strong enough and I just want to meditate and um, so as it continues it would just keep happening so then I'm afraid that since it's my thoughts, then I'm creating karma, and I might be sending messages out there that I'm not supposed to, but then I really can't stop it, even though it's not really coming from me. So I'm not sure what to do. Um, and when I ignore it or I let it go, then it just keeps coming back. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, even if the thoughts you think the thoughts is coming from you, whether it's, it is or not, you don't do anything. Don't do anything? Don't do anything. Mm. Regarding to the bowel movements, it's a healing process, so toxins being expelled, so there's nothing to worry about. You're not curious about it? Like, is it like, is it a, a real, you need to real, she needs to, really needs to go, or just a thought? If she really needs to go, she should go. <laughs> <laughs> no, ask her. No. <laughs> hey, Tui, is it is you, did you, is just a thought, or you, 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 you needed to go? Yeah, but hey, sometimes it's just a thought, and sometimes I really do have to go. So I do go after, but sometimes it's just a thought. And after you went, did you still have those thoughts of making a mess everywhere? <laughs> yeah, yes. You still do? Yeah. Mm, still did. Okay. Master Z, this is uh, your question. <laughs> Master I um, would have the same answer as uh, Master X. Uh, if it's the real, then she would go and if mm, just a thought and then just sit there. Mm. Don't mm. do anything. Mm. Okay, yeah. Very good. There you go. That's your answer. <laughs> yes, too. 
Dạ, um, kính thưa Thầy um, Cho con hỏi là khi mà mình niệm Phật xong tự nhiên mình bất giác Mình có mô sinh là giống như là có có lúc mình vui Rồi có lúc mình à, khóc á thì cái đó mình có tiếp nó làm như vậy mình có tiếp tục hay là mình phải chặn đứng nó liền hay là để nó tự nhiên như vậy thầy? Ừ. Yeah. Uh, hello master, uh, can I please ask a question? So when when I recite the Buddha's name, the Buddha name and uh, all the certain I see the emotion. Sometimes I feel happy. Sometimes I feel like I wanted to cry. And uh, at that moment, do I still continue, let it be, or I, can, I have to stop it? So what to do? Thank you. Okay. See, the mother and the daughter have the same kind of problems. It runs in the family. <laughs> uh, the principle is very simple. When you meditate, okay, when your uh, practice it is it's a, it's a drill for you to learn to uh, recognize states, experience states. So uh, whatever, whatever you experience during meditation or while you're reciting the Buddha's name, or reciting mantras, whatever goes in through your mind, okay? Uh, it's called a state. And whatever it is, you ignore it. Except for the case when you have to go, you should go. <laughs> okay? You don't want to ignore that. Uh, but other than that, uh, anything that's mental inside of your head, okay, it's called a state. To go is a physical state as compared as versus a mental state. When it's a mental state, whatever it is, you're, it's basically a distraction as far as you're concerned because your job at that moment okay, is to focus single-mindedly on what you're doing, reciting Buddha's name, reciting a mantra. That's your objective, therefore, Whatever other thoughts you have is basically a distraction, okay? And the Chan people call it state, okay? It's a, it's a polite thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a nice term, but basically is whatever crosses your mind other than what you're supposed to be concentrating on it's just a state, okay? Whether it's a good state or a bad state, it doesn't matter. And wherever state it is, you ignore it, okay? It's a distraction, like you're reciting and suddenly there's someone making a noise, someone moving, or a, a, uh, uh, you see an image, okay? Uh, that's all our old distractions or just a state. Something happens inside of your head, in your head. So that's only a distraction, therefore, ignore it, go back. Instead of following that, okay, go back to your recitation, go back to what you are working on, concentrate on that, okay? This applies to your daily life as well, because you're training. This is a training for you when you recite the Buddha's name or meditate. You are, you are developing the skills to ignore states and concentrate single-mindedly on what you're doing. Is that clear? This is why you get together here. Whether I'm here or not, it's not that important. There are plenty of people here uh, who will, that when you come here, you, you, they can help you. In your, in your spiritual practice, okay? Here at our temples, all our temples, most of them, their levels are much higher than you. So when you come to the temple, okay, mm -hmm. it's very helpful to you because they help you concentrate better on what, you, what you're doing, okay? So it's a, it's a lot more helpful than you think. Versus you stay at home, you have a lot more distractions, a lot of more noises, if you will, 
Okay, you come to the temple, and you you are now you basically are telling yourself, I'm commit to learning how to focus single-mindedly. Okay, not mindfulness, mind you. Forget about mindfulness. You hear me? Okay. Okay, no mindfulness. <laughs> Just concentrate. Okay. All I need you to, all I want you to do is you come to the temple. If you, if, uh, if you sit there, okay, nothing happening, recite the Buddha's name. Can you do that? Okay, just so recite Buddha's name, or recite a mantra, whatever you like to do, okay? Don't let your mind wander. Don't waste your time. But when you, for example, meditating, reciting Buddha's name, reciting a mantra, and then you have these states, your mind wanders. It's just a state, okay? Then your job is during these training sessions, you're supposed to learn to bring your mind back, bring your mind back to concentrate single-mindedly on what you're doing. Okay? Is that clear? And that's very important for you. You're learning to ignore everything else except for what you're doing. You don't allow anything, anyone, to distract you from your focus. Disrupt your focus. Is it clear? Why is it useful? It's useful to your daily life because in your daily life, when you have challenges, you're sitting there and your son comes along and yells at you. Never happened to you? Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. What is that called? A state. That's all. And now you have a choice to ignore it, not let it affect you, because you're receiving training here to be able to ignore all the external, anything else that's outside of your area of focus. That's how you stay in command of your life. Does it help? Hmm? And so, in the, in the gross case of Tui, you know, she, she, she has a, all these thoughts that come, it's just distractions. Huh? And, and those are, it's, it's normal. The more distraction you have, okay, the more chances you have to learn to turn your focus back inwards, ignore everything else. Turn your focus back onto your your work. All right. Yes, one. Thank you, Master. Um, there's a, a question here from Empty Mirror. Amita, for Master, there are a lot of fires happening in Southern California right now. What can we do to help those who have been injured and killed in the fires? Thank you. Well, in our cultivation, uh, at the end of the day, we transfer our merit and virtue to all living beings, okay? And then if you feel that you want to uh, extend uh, help to special groups of people, then after that, you should uh, transfer the merit and virtue to, for example, these victims of the fire the people who suffer from, from the current fires. And you can, uh, uh, our website, we should have some materials to, to show them how to do a transference, okay? At the end of the day, okay? Uh, all right, go for it. Amitabha Master, uh, thank you very much for, for your, uh, your teaching. Uh, uh, I encounter the similar uh, situation uh, like uh, um, uh, before, I think, uh, a few years back. Uh, it took me, uh, I think, uh, at least six months to overcome it. It's very frightening, 
frightened uh, thought because uh, every time when I sit crossing my leg, uh, after about 45 minutes, an hour, the, the urge to, to go to the bathroom is very severe. And it, it happened uh, very often. Very, uh, and, uh, Physical or mental? Uh, it, it, it is, uh, I think it's mental or it is, uh, like you said, it's a stage or maybe an obstruction. But it's very real. It's very real and very scary. And then I think... Um, Did we, you have to go? Yeah, yeah. You, and, and I, I, I stand up and then I walk to the bathroom and then nothing happened. You know? And a few times like that, it's uh, very confused. But uh, back then, we, did, we didn't have the, uh, the, 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 the inter-temple. Uh, so we, we could not ask you directly. So I tried to solve it myself. And, and um, I, I, I did try to fast, fast for three days and make sure that nothing in my stomach. And then I sit and then I said, if I have to go, then I, I go. So, but then uh, it's it, it very real. But uh, um, finally, I overcome that one. But it took me a very long time, very scary stage. But thank you very much for your teaching, Master. It, it is just a stage. So OK, it's a very important distinction, OK? If you physically have to go, you should go. Don't make a mess in the Buddha hall, please. <laughs> Your Buddha hall, mine. <laughs> it's too gross. <clears throat> on the other hand, <laughs> on the other hand, yeah, if after you realize it's a mental thing, you just ignore it. That's all. You endure it, it goes away. Uh, also, it turns out that uh, quite more often than not, and then you realize that to go there, this, the, the, the urge to go, is a lot more commonplace than you think. It's your body's natural way of expelling the toxins when you meditate, when you recite the Buddha's name, you are actually cleansing your body. Believe it or not, it looks like you're just doing something silly. Actually, it's cleansing your body. Okay? And the cleansing there has residues. It has to go out somehow, either through your breathing, uh, through uh, your urine, and through bowel movements and so forth. It's, it's a natural Occurrence. It's a good sign, by the way. Uh, so it's nothing to worry about. Okay. Uh, in 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 my personal cases, I have experiences like that as well. Not just that, but if you think uh, you know, it's actually very, very itchy around the around the around the, the gross area. <laughs> If you think you're gross, I'm grosser. <laughs> scary. Okay, it's very, very itchy. And, and eventually, these experiences are, that you go through eventually will help you understand better about your body, how, how sick your body really is, and how it got healthier through your spiritual practice. It's natural. Every time that you practice, you're cleansing your body, okay? And the cleansing there results in toxins having to come out in various forms. All right? It's a natural thing. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. No need to be scared at all, okay? It's just another state. Big deal. Go back to your concentration. Instead of being scared, instead of processing too much, Instead of doing that, you focus, okay? Ignore completely, and the best way to ignore is really because it's a distraction. For example, you're sitting here meditating, and someone stands next to you and, and yells at you or turns on the music. Anyone ever happen? My neighbor did it very often. Anyone? Yeah. Turn on the music. Next door neighbors in particular is not someone inside. You can say, hey! Put it down. But it's a neighbor. <laughs> the music is so loud through the windows. What are you going to do? Or happened to me very often too. 
Okay, wherever I go, the car alarm goes off. When I'm about to enter Samadhi, okay, feeling good, the car alarm goes off. <laughs> Everywhere I go. In Korea, I go to Korea, car alarm goes off in Korea as well. I think the same guy, the same ghost who follows me. <laughs> just, to, just to harass me. Okay? And so, when, in, when those cases happen, including when you have those gross things, what you can learn to do is focus strongly on your work, on your meditation topic, okay? Buddha's name, mantra, and so forth. You see that you can basically, you, it goes away very, very quickly. That's the best antidote. You hear? Okay? Try it, you see. And you, as you become more skilled, you'll be better at it. Okay? Yes, five in the back. Th thank you, Master. Um, when I meditate, uh, when there's a moment where I try to push, push the pain barrier, that's the moment I get really nauseated and vomited. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's not your thought. It's more like physically. Yes. And it's like, try to, it's kind of throwing up. It's kind of gross, but it's, it feels like my body wants to throw up and mm -hmm. I get nasty headache mm -hmm. and it prevents me to do further, uh, further meditation. So I stop and after that happens, when that triggers, this headache just and nausea, it just linger for days and days. Mm -hmm. So, do I? What do I do? See a doctor. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> when that happens, uh, the first thing you do is make sure you have something there for you to do it, okay? So that you eliminate immediately the worry that you're gonna make a mess. Very important, okay? Whether you stand up to go to the bathroom and continue in the bathroom, it's okay too. But you wanna make sure that you eliminate this fear that you gonna, you know, really, uh, be a very messy person, okay? Uh, but mm, other than that, okay, these are, your particular experience is, uh, is an indicator I, that I just mentioned that you are breaking through. And that's why your body is trying to shed a lot of toxins. And you should have not stopped. Next time it happens to any of you, you should instead focus on, you make sure you, you prepare for the, the, the mess, okay? But after that, you ignore and you focus on, on your work at hand, and it will take care of it a lot quicker than you were to stop and run away, and it would take a lot longer to overcome it. Okay? It's an opportunity for you to make a leap. Shh. That's a secret. Okay? Don't be scared. Just focus. DTT. Um, I'm Mitoma Vavster. Uh, I have two stories I want to share about how Cham made the life better for me and my families. It may take a little bit longer time. I will try to be brief. Uh, one thing is uh, my 14-year-old teenage son, last week he was sick. My husband was sick, spiking fever, headache. And uh, he was not able to do his homework. And one day night at 10.30, uh, I, were, I was already very tired trying to put the kids to sleep. And he walked to me to said, I was procrastinating. I have work to do. I don't know what to do. I won't be able to finish. And then um, I walked to his room and talked to him. He was in a panic mode. He said, he know he procrastinated, he couldn't finish. And he said, this will take me at least two all-nighters before I can finish. So I told him, mm, if you decided to do it, just do it. 
if you wanted to drop it, then drop it. Whatever you decide, I'll go with you. Like if you want to do the homework right now, I will go cross my leg and do my homework, do my work, and you can sit next to me, do your homework. But my only request is you need to do your homework crossing your leg. Um, background information is my older one is willing to cross the leg when he play video games, but he never, never, never cross the leg when he does the work. I have been trying to see how can I help him to and really experience the wonder of Chan. I was not able to do anything so far. So that night he agreed. He said, okay, I'll cross my leg. I said, okay, I'll cross my leg too. We'll sit to each, next to each other. You do your homework, I do my work, and we'll push until whenever you finish. So he piled his work on his side. He crossed his leg and he started to work. And 20 minutes in, he looked so surprised. He looked at me like, oh my God, mom, I'm not, I'm not drowsy anymore. I'm not sleepy anymore. I actually have the energy to do the work. I'm like, sure, go ahead. And then in between that, a little more than an hour, he keep on saying, oh my God, I finished this one already. I actually can do more. So can you help me get another piece? Because he didn't even print, put it on his side. Um, so he finished almost everything a little more than an hour. And he was amazed how much he finished. Um, after the whole thing, his whole face changed. He's more relaxed and he's ready to go to bed and start the second day. Um, the second story is about myself. Uh, I don't know what happened this week. It's just very, very tiresome. Maybe the kids were sick, and uh, Friday morning I was on the edge of calling sick, but I figure I have two very, very sick patients. They have been waiting to see me for a couple of weeks, so I figure, okay, I will just go and see whatever I can do. Uh, so Friday evening, um, I know I was exhausted, because when I get home, the kids was having a headache, so I tried to do the oil and do some massage, and um, not surprisingly, I start to have headache right after. And then um, I can see I'm totally exhausted. I feel like my battery is maybe 1%, but I'm exhausted and cannot sleep. And before I go to sleep, I was sitting in the closet, and for no reason, I start to cry and cry and cry. And like... I know it's my depression, it's not me, but I can't help with myself. I know it's not me, but I don't know how to get myself out of it. And at that point, I was so exhausted. So I made a decision, and Saturday morning, I would try to sit a little longer than usual. Um, another background story is, uh, ever since my lung sit, maybe almost two months ago, I was not able to sit long. Initially, 10 minutes was exhausting, 30 minutes was difficult, by maximum, I was able to push was 90 minutes. Usually at that time, the pain is crazy. I was, I have millions of thoughts in my mind is unbuckle, 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 unbuckle. I can't focus. So I usually unbuckle at 90 minutes. But Friday night at that time, I know I have to push a two hour to help myself get out of this um, dark hole. So Saturday morning, I was lucky because we have a couple of Chinese disciples. We have a morning, Saturday morning, long sit together session. So I sat with them. And uh, uh, just like how it happened to me by 90 minutes, I was totally like a crazy people. <laughs> I was laughing because I look exactly like a very, very sick Parkinsonism patient. I was shaking, I was sweaty, I was crying, I was tumble on the floor. But I cannot help with it. I can't, I just can't control myself. I try to focus on mantra. I try to read, recite the um, uh, Varja Sutra. I just can't. I recite for 20 minutes, 10 minutes, and again, I'm in this manic or crazy crying and screaming mode. And usually at that point, I feel so embarrassed. I will silent myself and turn off my video with a virtual sitting group. But at that time, um, I was like, who cares what I looks like? Um, I just need to push to two hours because that's the only way I can get myself out. So I turn on the video and turn on the audio and the cry and the shaky voice to say, can you guys help me? Can you recite the Varja Sutra together? Can you read it together with me? And they did. So we um, read the Varja Sutra for 20, 25 uh, minutes, all together, five of us. And I was able to calm down. There are a couple of times I'm out, but then their voice reading was able to bring me back. And towards the end, I was completely calm. I was not shaking, not crying, not screaming. 
I feel like kind of like a half dreamy status because I'm so comfortable. I don't even need to open my eyes. Um, so my friend helped me push through until the two hours. Until that point, my mind was totally calm. Um, at that point, I thought everything would be perfect and wonderful and everything would be great. And uh, again, last night, I thought I would have a wonderful sleep. Then I got woke up at 3.30 for no reason. My mind is racing like crazy. <laughs> at that point, I was, like, I was like, how much more? So I recited the uh, 42 hands on eye hands number two until I fell asleep. And I think that's it. I think I was over the hump at that point. Um, so that's my story to share how Chan helped me. Um, thank you. Thank you, Master. Thank you, um, all the Sangha team. Thank you so much. And special thanks for my Dharma friends. Without them, I don't think I can really push through the two hours, but they helped me. Thank you so much. For those of you who don't know her, she's actually a doctor. <laughs> Have been one for a long time. <laughs> okay, uh, as we talk today, I just it dawned on me that the one thing that you could do to help your children. Hmm. The younger, not, not much you can do for them, but if they are, uh, if they are old enough, uh, I think uh, you could, uh, you could uh, your goal should be to convince them that they need to use meditation when they are uh, in certain situations, okay? Very specific situations. For example, they are they have a headache. Okay, and they're uh, uh, like in the case of the examples that people brought brought up today. Uh, you should you. It's a lot easier to teach your children to convince your children to meditate or develop meditation skills when it's like a, a cool tool for them to use. Hmm? When they have, for example, uh, some, they're not feeling well in the stomach, they have a, a minor headache and so forth. If they were, you convince them to meditate, right then, you have very good chances of them believing in meditation. And that meditation is a very important tool for them to have the rest of their lives. Hmm? Mm -hmm. They're tired, or they're especially indigestion, uh, some 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 uh, uh, headaches and so forth. Uh, and you, this is when the, the the kids are looking for some something cool for them, some some cool skill, some cool let's say tricks for them to use. Okay, keep that in mind. Does it make sense to you? Am I making sense? This is what what uh, motivates the kids to learn. Okay, it's transactional for them. We need to show them if they do that, it's a cool thing and they can uh, come out ahead. All right, keep that in mind. Uh, I look forward to more input from you on how to uh, better formalize it. Yes, DTT. Oh, 좀 전에 말씀하셨 위산사에서 질문하셨던 화장실 가고 싶은 문제, 그 다음에 토할 것 같고 심한 두통이 저한테도 그런 경험이 있어서 좀 경험을 공유하고 싶고요. If right before from WMT, there were someone mentioning about urge to go to bathroom and having a headache, also feeling nauseous. 이 화장실 문제 같은 경우도 저도. 저 같은 경우는 설사를 할것 같아서 가 보면 아무 일이 없는 거예요. 그러니까 변기에 앉으면 씻은 지 사라져서 그렇게 한 두세 번 속다 보니까 이게 경계라는 느낌이 왔었어요. 네. So in my case, for example, going to bathroom, uh, I felt like I want to do diarrhea. So I go to the bathroom, sit in the toilet, but nothing happens. So I thought, I thought somebody's tricking me. So and I realized that's a state. 
그 다음에 이제 지니님하고 저도 같은 경험이 있었는데 결과부자 하는 동안에 이제 마석께서 길게 앉으라는 지침을 주셨는데 결과부자만 하면 토할 것 같고 머리가 깨질 것 같은 거예요. 근데 제가 3년 전에 그러니까 2021년도 11월에 28시간을 위산사에서 앉은 적이 있었어요. 2021년도 11월 겨울 선칠이요. 28시간이요. So, for example, just like Jeannie, uh, when I sit, especially Master instructed me to sit long seat, and then I start to feel uh, my head is uh, going to break, like serious, serious headache and nauseous. For example, 2021 November, during the winter chi, I sat for 28 hours. 이제 그, 그때 이제 28시간 앉는 동안에 음, 26시간 동안 아팠어요 정말 나머지 2시간은 너무 아파서 기절했던 시간이었거든요 네. So within that 28 long seat, 26 hours I was really sick and 2 hours I just passed out 그래서, 제, 네, 그래서 제가 그때 그렇게 경험을 하고 났더니 그 다음부터 결과부자 하면 웬만하면 아프지 않았고 또 마서께서 말씀하신 대로 화장실 문제라든지 토할 것 같은 문제는 제가 토할 수 있는 바가지랑 어, 좀 휴대용 변기를 따로 준비를 해서 그 경계에 대비를 했던 게 마음의 안정을 찾았던 것 같아서 이 경험을 공유 드립니다. So such experience, after such experience, after sitting long, uh, no longer I was sick. But about going to bathroom and nausea, what I did was to relieve my fear. I prepared a bucket and the napkins next to me. So I'd like to share this experience with everyone. Thank you. Okay, time is up. Thank you, everyone. Uh, let's do the lunch offering. <laughs>